Hey, what's up everybody? Tutal Toby here, and in today's OnShape tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this setup. Now, really, I'm gonna do this as a two-part series, um, and these, this video is gonna be a little bit on the longer side. What I really wanted to do was create a true step-by-step -step tutorial that teachers or students could follow along with and create a hex bolt. There's a lot of good lessons we can learn from modeling a hex bolt. You know, we can learn about how to create these nice rounded corners on the head of a hex bolt. We can learn about what the proper way is to set up a helix and then to sweep a profile along that helix. And we're also gonna talk about how to create this lead in here at the top of the hex bolt so that these two parts can in fact mate together or screw together. Now in the second video, I'm gonna show you how to create this hex nut and how to do what's called match threading, which means you've got an existing part and the threads in that existing part work well. Now you wanna create the mating component for it and you wanna kind of transfer those threads into the mating component. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in the second video, but for now, let's get into this first video. This is gonna be a true step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create the hex bolt. So it's gonna be a little bit on the longer side, but I'll include bookmarks down below. So you can just kind of click into the different sections of this lesson and hopefully you will learn how to create a 3D printable hex bowl. Ow! So here we are in our web browser in the totally free version of OnShape, onshape.com slash free if you want to sign up for that free account. And we're going to choose to create a new document. I'll call this 3D printed hex bolt and nut. We're gonna create the nut in the second part of this tutorial series, but in Onshape, it's very easy to create multiple parts that interface with one another all in the same document. So we're gonna create this document here, 3D printed hex bolt and nut, and now we're going to create the hex bolt itself. Now, this is not working from any existing standard of uh, an existing off-the-shelf hex bolt. This is a custom 3D printed part that I'm going to create. And so with that in mind, if you wanna change any of these dimensions to fit the project that you're working on, you know, feel free to do that. But this should be a really nice step-by-step -step tutorial to help you create a hex bolt. So I'll start out here by create by selecting the top plane, pressing S and creating a new sketch on the top plane. And then I'm gonna press N to get normal two. Now I'm gonna jump into the polygon command, the inscribed polygon command. You can see here that we've got the inscribed and circumscribed polygon. We're gonna use inscribed and you're gonna see why in just a moment. So the inscribed polygon command, I'm gonna single click on the origin, move my mouse out, I'm gonna single click again. And then as I move my mouse here, kind of left and right, you can see that I'm increasing and decreasing the number of sides on this polygon. So if you've never used the polygon tool before, now you kind of have a basic idea of how to use it. Once you decide on a size that works for you, you can single click in the background. Let's say I, I choose seven and I single click in the background and then I realize, oh, actually this is supposed to be six because it's a, it's a hex bolt, right? So you just double click on that dimension, change it to six and there we go. Now we've got this nice hexagon. So I'm gonna take one of these lines of the hexagon and press H on my keyboard. That makes that line horizontal. And then I'm gonna press the S key and jump into the smart dimension command. And for this 3D printed project, I'm gonna make the flat to flat distance 40 millimeters. So there we go. We've got our 40 millimeter uh, dimension there for the flat to flat. We've got a circle here uh, inscribed in this polygon. That's gonna be important. We're gonna use that in the next step when we go to create our rounded corners. So now let's take that shape and let's extrude it. So S key extrude, and we're gonna extrude that up to a height of 13 millimeters. And again, these are just kind of uh, imaginary numbers that I came up with that look good, but for your project, they might be a little different and that's fine. Um, you should be able to kind of follow along with this tutorial and then make changes as you see necessary. So we're gonna make that 13 millimeters high, hit the uh, green check mark, hit okay. And there we go, we've created kind of the head for that hex bolt. I like to rename my features, so I'm gonna use shift N here. And I'm gonna say head for hex. And now I'm going to show this original sketch. So I'm gonna show this sketch of that has a circle there. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna create those nice rounded corners around the perimeter of the hex bolt. And one way that you can do this is you can start with a sketch here on the front plane. So this is the plane that's going through these corners of the hex, this corner and this corner of the hex. Um, this, is, this wouldn't work if I chose the right plane. You'll see why in just a moment. So I'm gonna choose the front plane here. And then on the front plane, I'm gonna choose to begin a new sketch. So begin a new sketch there, get normal two. And the geometry that I'm gonna create is gonna look like this. It's gonna be a, a line that comes over like so. It's gonna be another line that kind of comes up here like so. Let me delete that extra line. And then it's gonna be an arc, which is tangent to that uh, upper line. 
So create an arc here. You can see that this arc has a tangency relationship to this upper line. If you didn't get that tangency relationship, just go back in and add it manually. Now I'm going to take this point of that sketch and this arc from the inscribed polygon, and I'm gonna use what's called the Pierce constraint, which means that wherever that arc is passing through the sketch plane, there's gonna be a relationship. So I'm gonna pierce that point in the current sketch to the arc of that external sketch, and we can see that that locked in to where that uh, where that circle is. Now I'm gonna create a relationship here, just a coincident relationship between these two. So I'll press I on my keyboard for coincident. And then finally, I'm gonna add a dimension here. And the deeper this dimension goes, the, the closer you're gonna get to tangency. So let's say I make that 1.5 and then I'm gonna just press N to get normal two. And uh, then I'm going to examine that dimension and I'm going to change that dimension to two. You can see that we're getting closer and closer to tangency here for this other arc. You can kind of imagine that by seeing where this point is relative to this point. The closer this gets to horizontal, the closer you are getting to tangent. Now, it doesn't have to be tangent. Um, I like in this case, with, you know, with this geometry that I've created here, I like for this dimension to be closer to, to close to tangent, but not quite perfectly tangent. But if that's what you wanted, you could take these two points and just make them horizontal to one another. I'm gonna use a dimension here of 2.5. I'm gonna create a line that goes up through the middle of the model here like so. And then I am going to perform a revolve command. So revolve. And for the revolve command, I'm gonna say, this will be my revolve axis. There you can see what that preview looks like. It is showing up red uh, because I'm probably gonna end up getting like a zero thickness error if I try to make this as solid geometry. But we're not trying to add geometry, we're trying to remove geometry. So we choose remove and there we go. We hit the check mark, we hide that original sketch and look at that thing, that thing is looking good. That is uh, pretty much exactly what we wanted from this model. A uh, nice little rounded off head there. And you can, you know, you can see that when you 3D print that that side is gonna be in a nice smoother transition where this side here, I'm gonna leave this side sharp. And that way when you 3D print your model, you can kind of compare the two results and you'll see what I mean. And this is basically what a, a traditional hex bolt looks like. It's got these rounded off corners here. Well, that's how you can create that geometry in Onshape. So now let's, uh, let's rename this feature Shift N. We'll call this um, uh, Rounded Corners on Hex. And let's move on now and create our next feature, which is going to be the shaft for those threads. So I'll pick this face here, begin a sketch, uh, orient my view. I'll just leave the view oriented the way it currently is. Create a circle here. And I'm going to give this circle a diameter of 20 millimeters. And then I'm going to extrude that out to a height of 65 millimeters. So I'll press tab, 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 65, enter, enter. There we go. Nice quick way to uh, to quickly create that geometry. And we'll call this thing shift N here, uh, shaft for the reds. Always good to rename your features, kind of let you and your, your coworkers know what's going on with those features. Now, what I want from this thing, let me do a shift one here to get into my front view. What I want from this thing is I want to have a lead in so that when I go to, to put this thing into the, the nut or, or engage the threads into the mating component, uh, it's, it's very easy for the geometry to, to mate together. And the, the intuitive way of creating this feature would be to create a chamfer. So I could create a chamfer like this. The problem is we're going to be adding material for the threads. And once we add that material for the threads, we're not really going to have a clean edge that we can just chamfer. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch here that we're going to plan on using a little bit later in the design to create that lead in. So I'm going to go to the front plane here and I'm going to begin a new sketch and I'm going to create some geometry that looks like this. It's going to uh, start here uh, kind of at this, this top edge of the model. It's going to come down here at about a 45 degree angle. It's going to come up like this. Uh, we'll probably bring this up like 10 or 15 millimeters above the model. It's going to come over like this, uh, same kind of idea, 10, 15 millimeters above the model. And then we'll close this off here like so. Let's make that 10 millimeters. That looks pretty good. Let's make that line vertical and let's create a coincident relationship between these two entities. Uh, like I said, we're going to have a, uh, an additional kind of offset here. Let's say we'll make this uh, 12 millimeters. 
Uh, really kind of arbitrary what that distance is. And then we're going to define what the lead-in angle is here. Now, I'm going to make this at 45. You might decide to make it a little bit more or a little bit less. I'm going to make that lead-in angle at 45 there. And then I'm going to finish up by creating a vertical line here. And this vertical line is going to serve two purposes. It really is going to be used for construction. So I'm going to take that line and just uh, click on it and press Q to turn it into a for construction line. And then I'm going to add some dimensions. I'm going to add a dimension here to represent what the diameter of that lead-in is. And I'm going to make that diameter uh, 14 millimeters uh, to work with this geometry. And then I'm also going to create a dimension here that goes from this point to the top of the model, and I'm going to make that at 5 millimeters. So basically, this is at one half of this distance here. And the, the uh, significance of that is that that's going to become the end point of our helix in just a couple of steps. You'll see that in just a couple of steps, so just kind of kind of bear with me. But the reason we're creating that with a dimension instead of just leaving it free is because if the length of the shaft changes, we want the helix to update with that length change. So that's why we're assigning a relationship uh, between the, the uh, top of the shaft and this end point here. So... I think that sketch looks pretty good, and eventually what I'm going to do with that is a revolve cut uh, or a revolve and remove material, but I'm not going to do that yet. So I'm just going to hit the check mark here, and I'm going to rename this to uh, sketch uh, for lead-in chamfer. Call it that. Sketch for lead-in chamfer. So I'm going to be using that sketch a little bit later in the tree, but I wanted to create it now while I have nice sharp geometry before I get in and actually create the threads. All right, so uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these uh, front, top, and right planes. Uh, I'll just hide them using the, the traditional hide command instead of pressing P because I do still want to see some of my planes. And uh, one of those planes that I do still want to see is going to be a new plane that I'm going to create here. So I'm going to pick on this face here, and I'm going to go into the plane creation command. That's going to automatically take me into an offset plane command. And I'm just going to offset that 3 millimeters, and that 3 millimeters is going to go down underneath that head of the bolt and this is where my helix is going to begin and uh, that way my threads kind of immediately begin here at the bottom and I don't have to do any cleanup we could there's other ways that we could resolve this issue but this I think is a, a fine way if you're going to be 3d printing uh, to, to create the transition between the threads and the underside of the head so I'm going to create a, a plane here which is down three millimeters down underneath and there we go and that is going to be I'll do a, a rename there that'll be plane for helix uh, base circle, call it that. All right, so now let's create that helix base circle. So I'm going to pick this plane. I'm going to choose to create a new sketch, and I'm going to pick this uh, edge here of the model and use a, a convert or a project use command in on shape, and just kind of project that circle down onto that lower uh, that lower plane, and that is going to be my circle for the helix base. So now we're going to get into the helix command. Now, if you don't know where the helix command is, that's fine. In Onshape, we can always use the search tools command here. So I could search for helix, and there we go. And you can just launch the command right from those search results. So I'll launch the helix command. And then how am I going to create this helix? Am I going to pick a cylindrical face? Am I going to pick an axis? Or am I going to pick a circle? I am going to pick a circle. So here where we choose our circular edge, I'll choose this sketch that we've created. And then for the height of this thing, you can see that I can define this with a height. Well, I'm going to make that height can end condition an end point. So the end point of this helix is going to be this point here that we created in our layout sketch. And there we go. Now we can see what that helix looks like. Now, there's a lot of ways that you can define your helix. You could define it by the number of turns in the helix. So you can see here that the uh, target revolution here, I'm going to increase this to 12 and press enter. And there you go. You can see how that's changing. But typically when you're doing thread design, you're more concerned with what's called pitch, which is basically the distance between the thread, the, you know, the same point on consecutive threads, or in this case, the, the distance between two revolutions on the helix. So in order to define that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this option from input type to pitch. So we'll change this to pitch here, and we're going to say that the pitch between each of these threads is going to be 5 millimeters. 5 millimeters, and again, this is just for this design, kind of as a tutorial. In, in your example, you might change, you might tweak some of these dimensions, and that's totally fine. You, you know, you do you. You work with whatever works for you. If you like the ability to be flexible and to kind of create designs that work for you, take a minute, hit the like button on this video. Uh, very important that we always remember to hit the like button on these types of tutorial videos. All right, so we've got our 
Uh, just a review here. We started at the top. We said we're going to do a circle. We said we're going to pick the edge of that sketch that we created. We said our input type is going to be pitch. Our start angle is going to be zero degrees. That's fine. Uh, our end condition is going to be an end point, and that end point is going to be this end point here of that layout sketch that we created for the lead-in. And then our target pitch is going to be five millimeters. The uh, direction of the thread or the direction of the helix is going to be clockwise, standard, you know, righty tighty type of thread. So I think this all looks good. And we hit the green check mark and boom, there is our helix. We have now successfully created a helix for this design. And you can see that the helix does, in fact, go all the way down into the model. It ends up way down here. Now, in order to see that endpoint, because um, I am going to want to select that endpoint to use it for a plane creation, I'm just going to temporarily change here to a uh, wireframe option. So we'll do hidden edges visible. That makes it a little bit easier for me to see the helix and the endpoint of the helix. I am going to select the helix. I'm going to select the endpoint of the helix, and I'm going to create a new plane which is perpendicular to the curve at that endpoint. Now, fortunately, all I need to do is launch the plane command. The plane command is now buried here underneath the helix command from earlier. So we've got a lot of different types of reference geometry in here. So I'm going to choose the plane command. And Onshape is smart enough to realize that what I want is a curve at a point. We talked about this in a, an earlier quick tip video about how to create planes quickly. So I'm going to hit the check mark there, and that's going to create a new plane. Now you'll notice that this plane is not exactly vertical and we can kind of compare it to the uh, the front plane. Here you can see what the front plane looks like and here you can see what the new plane looks like. And this is important because we don't want our threads to be created on a skew. And, and if we were to create the sketch for the threads here on the uh, on the front plane, that's what we would end up with. We would end up with kind of a skew. You might end up with unexpected binding when you try to interact between the two components, between the hex bolt and the nut. So this is why it's always important whenever you're doing a sweep. So the, the helix that we created here is the sweep path, and we always want to create our profile plane on a plane which is perpendicular to that path at the end point. So I'm going to rename this here. I'm going to rename this plane. So shift N, I'm going to rename this to uh, profile plane for threads. And we are now ready to take that, that sketch plane. So we'll select that plane. We're going to begin a new sketch. Let's get normal too. And now we're going to create the profile for our thread. Now for the profile for this thread, we're going to once again reference the endpoint of the helix here. So here you can see the helix, here you can see the endpoint. And we're going to start out by creating a line from that endpoint. I know it's a little bit hard to see, it's a little bit hard to select, but we're going to create a line from that endpoint. And we can make that line horizontal for this example. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into the, the theory of thread creation for this uh, tutorial. Um, that could almost be its, in, its own video in entirety. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take this helix so you can see that I'm selecting a curve and I'm gonna take this point and then I'm gonna once again use the pierce constraint because the pierce constraint is going to lock that point down wherever that curve is passing through the sketch plane. So I'm going to pierce that, that, that end point of my line to this curve. So wherever this is passing through the sketch plane, that's where the pierce takes place. Now with the helix, it's a little tricky because it's actually passing through it in multiple locations, right? The helix is passing through my sketch plane down here. It's passing through it over here, over here, over here. So it's usually, you know, whichever pierce constraint is closest will be the one that is solved. But just keep that in mind. If this line was up here, I might accidentally actually pierce it to, to this location. And that's not what I want. I want to pierce it down here. So for the pierce, we pick the curve pick the point in our current 2D sketch, and that allows us to pierce that geometry. This is gonna become the center line for my thread. So I'm gonna uh, change that geometry. I'm gonna press Q and change that geometry. And then I'm gonna create the geometry for the thread. And the geometry for the thread is gonna look something like this. I'm gonna start out with a line command here. I'm gonna create a line which is perpendicular to that uh, original line that I created. Uh, I'll get in there and just add a perpendicular or I can make a vertical here I'm going to create a line that comes down here and kind of overshoots that original line that I created and then I'm going to put in uh, a mirror of that geometry so I'll just window select that geometry and mirror to mirror it across and now that I have created that mirror geometry I'm ready to get in here and start creating some dimensions so at the peak of that thread I'm going to use a dimension here of 1.2 millimeters at the base of that thread I'm going to use a dimension here of 4.2 millimeters you know, maybe you don't want to use those dimensions. Maybe you want to use an angle instead. That's totally fine. 
Uh, I'm going to create a dimension here from this point to the, the base of the thread, and it's just going to be a small dimension. And the reason that this, this overlap exists is because the helix is running right along the outer face of the, the shaft. Well, I want there to be just a little bit of overlap so I don't end up with like a zero thickness error or a gap or any kind of a problem with that thread. So that's why we create just a little bit of overlap. Now, if you, uh, if you wanted to control this dimension a little bit more accurately, what you could consider doing would be to create a, a line that goes from this point to here, a vertical line, and then also creating a line that goes from this point to here, a vertical line, and then dimensioning between those two points. And uh, that way your 4.2 would be a little less arbitrary, a little bit uh, easier to accurately control what the, the width is where the thread is touching the shaft of the hex bolt. But, you know, again, this is these are nuances that each person is going to decide as they're creating their geometry, you know, what works best for them. The final dimension I'm going to add here is just going to be the distance that the thread is sticking out from the shaft. This might be considered your thread diameter in, in traditional mechanical engineering terms, and you might create this dimension to the actual center line of the model. But in this case, I'm just going to be creating this as more of a, a theoretical exercise, a training exercise. So I'm going to make that at three millimeters. And now that I've got that thread profile created, I'm ready to sweep that along that helix. Let's now take that, that sketch and exit that sketch. That is our thread profile. So sketch the red profile. And now we are ready to sweep that thread profile along our path. So we jump into the sweep command here in Onshape, and we're gonna say that we're going to sweep this thread profile along this path. And there we go. I love the preview that Onshape gives us for that, that sweep. That looks fantastic. That's exactly what we were hoping for. So let's hit the green check mark and that creates our hex bolt. I'm gonna switch back here to a shaded view. Oh yeah, that is looking good. So we can see here that the, the way that we created our helix was that it kind of overshot the top of the shaft because it went up to that, that end point on that layout sketch that we created, that uh, sketch that we created for the, the lead in chamfer there. And so what that means is that we now need to use that sketch to remove that excess material. And so that's why we created that sketch the way that we did. We created it intending to remove this excess material and to leave ourselves with a nice lead in. So let's take that sketch. So here we can see our uh, sketch for lead in chamfer and let's do a revolve and this is going to be a revolve about this axis here and we are going to be doing a remove and look at that you can already see how nice that looks so i'm going to hit the check mark there and i'm going to hide that sketch so we'll hide the sketch for the uh, lead in chamfer i'm going to do a right mouse button here on the helix and choose to hide that the helix does show up as an item down here in our part studio down here kind of like its own extra body so if you want to completely get rid of that helix you can right mouse button down here and choose delete and you might just do this just for cleanup just so if somebody else sees it they don't see an extra body in the tree and now we can do some final renaming so i'll rename this one to uh, thread sweep i will rename this one here to uh, lead in chamfer so uh, cut revolve lead in chamfer and then I will rename this feature here to uh, delete helix and there we go that gives us a pretty nice result there I can press p on my keyboard to hide all my planes we can rotate this thing around we can take a look at it and if you're if you're feeling good about this what you can do is a right mouse button down here down here on part one and you can choose export and that's going to allow you to export that as an STL we'll call this hex bolt uh, test one and you can export that as an STL send it over to your 3d printer and you too can 3d print one of these hex bolts So I think that's where we're gonna stop with our tutorial today If you enjoyed this tutorial be sure to like the video be sure to subscribe and of course be sure to come back for the next video Where I'm gonna show you how to create the mating hex nut and the match threads so that these two components can actually thread together